and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Moses here, speaking to the children of Israel, getting ready to take them into the promised land. And he stops here in Deuteronomy chapter 4, says these words, and we're going to say them together on three. If you're at home and you're watching me, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9, we're spending time this month talking about family. And we believe that God has not changed his mind about family. And simply we're saying this month uh, that we're going to find out that people are really family or if they're just familiar. Come on, can you say amen? amen. How many of you know you got some people in your bloodline that are just familiar with you and are not necessarily your family? Can you say amen? Amen. And so let's do this memory verse on the screen behind me this morning. Might give us a little help over here. Uh, with the PowerPoint this morning, and we will say it together on three. One, two, three. Only take heed to yourself and diligently go ahead. Take heed to yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, uh -huh. and lest they depart from your heart uh -huh. all the days of your life, uh -huh. and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Amen. That is our memory verse for the month. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. I want to go into the first, uh, first installment of our message this morning. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. When you're going to start to talk about family and you want to find God's patterns of things, go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 4 and verses 1 through 10. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. This pericope of a story uh, is very foundational. Uh, it help us understand that there was in the garden of very the very first dysfunctional family with Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. We're going to spend some time this morning. Tell somebody Cain is able. Come on, say Cain is, is able, but you shall recover. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Those of you watching me at home, make sure you go there as well. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Bible reads this way. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Tell somebody, Cain is able. Verse 2, then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. Somebody say, Cain is able. Cain is Come able. on, tell somebody, you shall recover. You shall recover. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Verse 6, so the Lord said to Cain, why, have you, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. Watch it now. But you shall rule over it. Tell somebody, Cain is Abel. Is Abel. Verse 8. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And then the Lord, verse 9 says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? God in verse 10 says, And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Verse 6 again, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, you will, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Would you say to somebody right there in your living room, and so for you folk here in the chapel, would you say these words with me? Would you say neighbor? neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. neighbor. Are they family? Are they family? Or just familiar? Just familiar. It's the sin. It's the of the same skin, but you shall recover. But you shall recover. 
Come on, point at somebody from across the room. Look straight ahead for those of you who are watching me at home. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say, old oh, neighbor. Okay. Are they family okay. or just familiar? Just familiar. Come on, tell them it's the sin of the same skin, the same but you shall recover. You shall. I want to talk to you from the subject matter. Cain is able, sin of the same skin, recovering from COVID-19. Part one, quickly, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank your God that nothing ever catches you by surprise. And that God, even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the rioting, in the midst of the destruction, the despair, the loss of things around us, God, you've got the entire world and the nation right where you want us, focusing in at home. Father, that you will begin to do your work in every bloodline, and every family. We bind the work of the devil now that has set its will against our nation and the world and against every household. But God, that you would have your preeminence and reign in every house, in every life, with every man, with every woman, with every child, that the gospel will begin to go forward and that there will begin to be peace in the land beginning at home first. Thank you, God, for what you've already done and what you yet shall do. Now hide me in you so that your people only experience your presence and hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say family or familiar. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for those of you who stood in your living room or in your bedroom and are watching us on this online this morning. God bless you, dominionaires. Come on, God bless you, Dominionaires. Welcome to the start of the second half of the year. The few of us that have gathered, that's a good place to shout and give the Lord glory right there because you made it the first six months of the year. Didn't lose your mind. Everything going on around you is crazy. It seemed like dog that bit the cat, cat that bit the dog back, but you are still alive. Come on, say amen. 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 When we consider the impact of COVID-19 and the resurgence, of our nation's original sin of racial discrimination, of the loss of property, possessions, and for some people, for us in the walk of dominion, to be here to give the Lord praise and glory is indeed a miracle. Can you say amen? amen? It's a miracle that we are alive and well and that we've got the opportunity to focus in on what God is saying to us, even when we're dealing with the sin of the same skin. Can you say amen? I believe that the Holy Spirit is talking to our nation and the world right now when we consider the move of God in the earth, when we continue to see the historic tragedies that are going on around us, the untempered movements, it all sounds too familiar from where we just came from in our series, doesn't it? It sounds to me like wars and rumors of wars, famines and pestilence and disease, where the love of many is growing cold. Uh, but the river the Bible said in Matthew 24, 6 through 8, uh, these are just the beginning of sorrows and nothing is catching God by surprise. Can you say amen? amen? In the midst of all of this, I believe we are getting back to God's original design for the church and human society. I believe that what is happening is that God himself is writing the ship, if you will, that God is himself is back in charge in every house, in every home, and in every family. The Bible already says to us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. So hear me now, those of you watching me at home, when you reduce all of our sins and isms and schisms and all of our ologies and theologies and everything stems from God's original plan and the idea of family. Can you say amen? amen. Now listen, there is, this is still our year here in the world of dominion of clarity and focus. It is still the year of insight, hindsight, and foresight. And when the truth be told, when you have some insight based on some hindsight, you can have some foresight about how to deal with some people who are supposed to be family but really are just familiar in your life. Come on, can you say amen? amen. And so when we begin to examine all of our familiar relationships, 
we can find that some folk that are considered family are just familiar with you, and the folk who you thought were just familiar with you, turns out that they are really your family. You say, preacher, what can you base that on? I can base it on Matthew chapter 12, 48 through 49, not on the screen, but here is what it says. It says, Jesus, he answered and said to them, uh, to, to the one who asked him the question, that they were concerned that Jesus was forgetting his mothers and forgetting his brother. They said to him, Jesus said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Watch it. And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said these words. He says, here are my mother and my brothers. Here he is. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. Come on. Can you say amen? Amen. You got some people that's got the same skin as you that will not do the will of God concerning you. You might as well say amen, look straight ahead. We're in a season right now where we're finding out who is family and who is just familiar. Tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. If we're going to be here, we might as well have church. Tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin, but I shall recover. When we, cons when we consider how God predetermined, uh, how God predetermined how the earth would be governed, we'll find that there are four realms of ordained jurisdictions, uh, meaning God sanctioned structures of human population in the earth. When we consider all of human population, when we consider how the earth is organized, when we consider human populations of people and institutions and entities, there are only four of them that are God-ordained to govern the earth. The first one is self-government. Somebody say self-government. Self this is because we are created in the image of God and we have access to the Holy Spirit where we can begin to govern ourselves. Can you say amen? amen. The second one is the institution of marriage. God himself orchestrated the very first marriage in all of creation. You see it happen. He creates two of every kind and every animal has one just like it in the opposite sex. But for Adam there was no helper and God made a help for him. Can I have a quick sidebar right there, Sheila? Which is to say to men, don't go out in the jungle hunting and trying to find because you come back with something wild, Mike. Wow. But if you let God to keep you in the midst of purpose, Adam didn't have to search for a wife. God brought Eve to him to help him with his purpose. Y'all ain't gonna talk with me. Say amen if you can. The third would be the one of the church. Somebody say the church. Church. The first is self-government. The second is the family. The third is the church. God gave birth to the church himself on Calvary's cross when the blood and water flowed from Jesus' side. And then when the Holy Spirit visited them on the day of Pentecost, the church was born. And in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, God gives instructions of how the church of Jesus Christ ought to be governed. We talked about it on last week. You're going to go back to YouTube, watch the video, or order the CD. Come on, say amen if you can. Amen. And the, uh, the very last one, or, or, the, or the fourth one, would be governing authorities among men themselves. Romans 13 reminds us that God sees government or those who operate in government are ministers of God. And when we consider where the world is today, all four of those are in an upheaval, aren't they? All four of them are in need of alignment with God and with each other. And if you follow the scriptures carefully, what you will find is that all four of them flow from the concept of family. God himself is a family man. We are his children. Come on, say amen if you can. Amen. And so then the question becomes, when you consider why God would choose Abraham to be the father of the faith, it is not because Abraham is so special. Come in, those of you watching me at home. Abraham ain't even a Jew. Let me just debunk that myth right there. God doesn't even choose him because he's a Jew. He is a Gentile from the earth of the Chaldees. So when you understand that he's Babylonian by way of his uh, uh, genesis and his genetics, Genetics. God uses somebody who's a Babylonian to become the father of the faith to set the people of God aside from 
for God's use. And I believe I found the answer, Sister Donna, about why God chose Abraham. It's right there on the screen behind me in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. Here is what the Bible says that God said concerning Abraham. He says, for I have known him. Somebody say, know him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, watch it, that they keep the way of the Lord, here he is, to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abram what he has spoken to him. God chose Abraham because Abraham would teach his children and his entire household not to just follow God, Mike, but to do righteousness and justice. And if there was ever a time in our nation where we need righteousness and justice, it's right about now. Because we're seeing people that's got the same skin committing sin and people who are of different sin committing skin, sins of people who have different skin. And we're all God's children. And we need righteousness and justice and the way of the Lord to see our way out. Of this. Come on, tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin. Yeah, we must remember that Israel starts out now as one man. Somebody say one man. Israel starts out as one man in Abraham, the father of the faith. He has a son named Isaac who has a wife, Rebecca. And then there is the, their child, Jacob, who becomes the chosen woman. Jacob has now 12 sons. They start out as one man. They become a family. They then become a clan. And then they move and become a tribe. And after they become a tribe, they become a nation in Egypt. And while, Egypt, while, while in Egypt, they experience oppression and bondage of the Egyptians. And finally, God gets ready to set them free. Watch it now. The scripture says this. This is what God said to Moses in Exodus 12 and 3 on the screen behind me. And for those of you, you can see it at home. He says, speak to all Israel, or all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the 10th month, come on, bring me another one. On the 10th month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Let me read it again. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the 10th of this month, somebody say the 10th, every man, somebody say man, shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Look at verse 4. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor take to his house, take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. What God says to Israel is he says, listen, I'm getting ready to set you free. And what I need you to do is I need you to get a lamb for every single house. He says, I want every man, the father in every house, I want you to get a lamb, not just for you, but the lamb represents your household. Somebody say household. household. He says, now and if there are, are too many people or not enough in one house for the lamb to go around, get another lamb and bring your neighbor in your house with you and y'all prepare that lamb together and I will count all of that as one house. He says, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, you shall take it from the sheep of the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day to do the same thing. See, in our communities, this is a moment right now for solidarity. Amen. But that solidarity is going to begin at home first. Uh, this is a moment right now in America for solidarity among all communities. But at home, we've got to get ourselves together at home first in order to have this solidarity. Come on, 12 and 13. Here it is. He says, now the blood, somebody say the blood. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. Notice that the blood is not on the people of Israel, but the blood is on the house. Uh -huh. I feel like preaching it here now. I said the blood is not on the people, but the blood is on the house. And the Bible says that God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over your house. This is the time now for us to get our houses right because of what's coming on the earth next. But when God sees the blood over every house, when he sees it 
visit on every man, every woman, every child. God will begin to spare those who do not, who are under the auspices of the covering of the blood. Remember this, every family is identified by their bloodline. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in there this morning. Uh, every family is identified by the blood that is in their bloodline, which is why it's so no good when we have got sin in the skin and we'll just have a blood transfusion and become children of God and allow the blood of Jesus to keep us covered. Can you say amen? See, when God delivered Israel, he delivered them house by house. Somebody say house by house. He didn't deliver them as a nation. He delivered them as house by house families who were a nation. And this is the time for us to get back into our houses and get our children and our loved ones connected to God first. Come on, tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin. Amen. Everybody needs the blood of the Lamb on their doorpost. Listen, when God brings the he brings it from the house first. Watch it now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1. There's a flood. Sister Donna coming to the earth. Rain is getting ready to come. God says this to Noah, the most righteous man in the earth at that time. Genesis 7 and 1. He says, then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. And he says, you and all. Somebody say all. Oh. You and all your household. Because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. God didn't just want Noah. He wanted Noah and all of Noah's house. Somebody say the house. Look here. Uh, and, and when there was a father who had a young man that was sick, and he came to Jesus, and Jesus said, send the word to, he said to Jesus, just send the word to my house. Jesus in John 4 and 53 on the screen said this. It says, so the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. He himself believed, watch it, and his whole household believed the word that Jesus had spoken. In the New Testament, in the book of Acts, it was not just individuals who came to the Lord, but it was the whole household. Tell somebody it's about the house. house. Acts 16 and 31 says this. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Here it is. You and your household. Tell somebody it's about the house. About the and house. what we have found out during this sheltering and in place season is that there has been some sin of the same skin and that the Lord had a shelter in place so that we could recover from the aftermath and get our households together. Gone are the days for you to jump in, shout in church, and go home and live like hell. God wants you and your whole household saved. He wants you and everybody connected to you to have the same worldview, same understanding, share the same values, apply the blood and the principles the same way. When God comes, he comes to check out not just you, but he comes out to check out your household. Tell somebody we shall recover. We have to be willing to deal with some of our issues and deal with some of the sin that's in our skin. And if we're going to overcome the sin that's in the same skin, one of the first things we've got to do is we've got to be able to perceive, or oh, watch this, I can say it better like this, know those we are in covenant with. Look at somebody and say, know those you are in covenant with them. Come on, tell somebody, I don't know you like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we got the same skin, but I don't know you like that. Come on. We oftentimes, watch it now, end up in trouble in our family dynamics because we don't know those who are among us with the same skin. I know I'm right about it, y'all. ain't got to shut me down. And just because they are of the same skin, Skin, that doesn't necessarily that makes them our kin, but that don't necessarily make them our kind. You, you you got people that are in your bloodline that got the same skin that are connected with you, but there is a difference between you and them.
them. Some of them are family and others are just familiar. Can you say amen? amen? And in our text this morning, Abel is in trouble with Cain. Watch it now. Because Abel doesn't really know Cain. He, he, he's his brother and he would not think that Cain would do to him what he does to him. But because Abel doesn't really know Cain, he goes out into the field with Cain and finds himself in trouble. Tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin. They are connected with each other. They come from the same seed, got the same father and the same mother, but they are different. Most of the issues that we face in our lives have to do with people who we thought were family, but come to find out they're just familiar with us. And oftentimes the issues that we face, we face them because we don't really know them. I almost want to go somewhere. I'm trying to hold myself you got to be careful when you're coming into certain family dynamics. you got to get to know them. Come on, say amen. I brought some help. If we're going to recover from COVID-19 and the sheltering in place and the stuff that you saw, the stuff that you thought was hidden that's lying beneath, the stuff that you thought was going to be concealed, but yet God revealed it, you've got to deal with the sin and the same skin. And the first thing you do is you've got to know those that you are in covenant with. Come on, here it is. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12 on the screen behind me. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Somebody say, know them. Okay. Timothy 5 and 22. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Somebody say, know them. Know them. You can't let you can't put your hands on everybody. Not in this next season. Come on, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. Here it is. The Lord knows. Somebody say no. No. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Can I put my foot in that there for a few seconds? There are some things. Iniquity means the sins that are hidden. There are some sins that are hidden in the bloodline that we like to sleep under the rug that we don't want to talk to nobody about. There are some iniquity, some stuff we don't want to talk about, some stuff we don't want to deal with. But see, when you don't deal with the sin that's in the skin, all of a sudden that thing can begin to repeat itself over and over and over again, which is why God wants you sheltered in place right now so that you can deal with the issues because of what's coming on the earth. Can you say amen? Yeah, tell somebody, you've got to get to know them. See, 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 Cain, Abel didn't really know Cain. He didn't know that Cain would do this to him. Uh, he, and Abel was just functioning based upon the purity of his heart. You could see that in his offering. Abel's offering was pure before the Lord. He gave God all of everything that was there. Tell somebody, Cain is Abel. Oh, you better study Cain in your bloodline because Cain is able. Come on, say amen. We all got some Cains in our family bloodline and we think we know them and we really don't know them until there's a situation that arises. The Bible uses this term to know and Adam knew his wife Eve. He uses this term to describe sexual relations. Uh, the scripture translates it in that way. But the word to know there is the Hebrew word Strong's H 30 and 45. It's the word Yada. It means to know. Look at it on the screen behind me. It means to know or learn to know. There are some people you got to learn to know by watching their patterns over time. You have to study them. Come on, somebody say know them. It means to perceive. It means to see. Here it is. It means to find out through discernment. To know, to be acquainted with, to have the knowledge of. Watch this. It literally says this. It says to have the knowledge of and to be wise around. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Don't you leave that money on the corner of your dresser because John Boy got a little klepto spirit that come from his great granddaddy and if you leave that money out, you're going to lose your money. Somebody say sin of the same skin. Come on, you got to watch Auntie Pearl at the family reunions. You know, 
Auntie Pearl, when she get a little juice in her, she don't like to kiss you on the cheek, she kiss you in the mouth. Come on, say amen. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you, don't you leave that. Don't you give Junior that money right now. I know Junior say he got a new idea, he got a new invention, but he had a new idea and a new invention for the last five family reunions, and we ain't seen nothing yet. Junior gonna smoke up that money. You might as well say amen. Tell somebody it's the sin of the same skin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you let Cousin Tina in your house. I ain't talking to nobody in here. I'm talking to somebody watching me on the screen right now. I know Tina need a place to stay. Tina is having a hard time. Tina is down on her luck right now. And Tina don't have no money to take care of the kids. But you gonna go to work one day and find out and come home and find Tina in your bed. And I know I'm right about it right there. Somebody say it's the sin of the same skin. You got to know them. If you're going to recover from being sheltered in place, this is your time to proceed and to know them. Come on, can I give us number two real quickly? If we're going to recover from being sheltered in place in our family dynamics, not only must we proceed and know them, but we also got to recognize the patterns. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta recognize the patterns. Come on, somebody at home, just type that in. Recognize the patterns. In many instances, God sets patterns to be followed as principles. I don't wanna go too fast right there. I want you to write that down. God sets patterns to be recognized as principles. I gotta say it again for somebody that came too fast. I'm gonna slow it down. God sets patterns to be recognized as principles. And oftentimes, we get upset with those who are our kin because something may be or may not be working for them and it's working for them or not us. Or you got something that's working for you and ain't working for them and you catching haterade for them. If you would just do like I would do, I would just look at them and say, listen, don't hate the player, hate the game. Because the principles work if you follow the pattern. Oh, God, help me in here. If you will follow the pattern, the principle will work for you. I want to suggest to all the canes out there, not in here, those watching me this morning, in the text, if you follow the pattern, the principle cane will work for you. God is not a respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for the other. You just have to find the pattern and follow the principle. Can I teach right through here for a second? See, this is where you find out that everybody that's your kind and that everybody that's your kin ain't necessarily your kind because those that are your kind will follow the patterns laid out by God because they understand that life is lived by principles. Come on, can you say amen? I got to pause right here and tell somebody, look at this. The Bible says in the process of time, verse 3, look at verse 3, in the process of time, you really don't know those who are connected with you until enough time go by. You, you don't really know who they really are until enough time go by. I would dare say, uh, if you watch from one generation to the next, you can then find out who it is that they really are. Uh, because you will see in them what is going on in a previous generation. And from that, you can make your decision. And when you see, oh God, I feel something get ready to hit me upside in here. Listen, when you see it, you ought to believe in them when they show it to you. You didn't hear what I just said. Don't believe it when they speak. But even when they show it to you, because who they are is existed in a previous generation. You ain't going to say amen, but God wants us to get it together in this season as we've been sheltered in place. Come on, everybody that's your kin ain't necessarily your kind. Watch the text. The text says, in the process of time, Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Verse 4 says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock. He brought the fat and watch the Bible. He brought the firstborn and he brought the fat. The Bible says that the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but didn't respect Cain and his offering. The question is, what is it about Abel's offering and what is it about Cain's offering? Now watch this now. The word Abel, or the name Abel means breath. Now we just came through Pentecost Sunday and talked about the Holy Ghost as the wind of 
God. And the Bible says that God breathed into the nostrils of man, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And in the text, Abel represents the breath of the Holy Ghost. What separates Cain from Abel is that Abel has got the Holy Ghost and lets the Holy Ghost lead him in terms of what to do with his offering. I got to pause right here and say this to somebody watching me on the line, on the screen. There are some things in your bloodline, if you're going to handle it and deal with it, you need the Holy Ghost. You trying to manage this stuff in the flesh, going tit for tat, arguing, you better get on your face before God call on the name of Jesus. Love him from a distance and pray because you can't handle it without the Holy Spirit. Come on, say amen. It takes the Holy Ghost to deal with some folk in your family. And you ain't got to shout now, but just look straight ahead at the iPhone, iPad, TV, your computer. You know good and well it takes the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout yes. Here is the principle and the pattern here in the text. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says this. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Here it is. And with the first fruits of all. Somebody say all. First fruits of all your increase. Watch it now. So your barns will be filled. Somebody say follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. Honor the principle. Well, yeah, come on. Somebody say follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. Honor the principle. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Abel with the Spirit of God said, I got to give God the very best. I'm going to give him the first of all of my sheep and I'm going to give God an offering on top of giving him the first. But Cain, Cain is an interesting somebody. Uh, uh, Cain is like some of the folk that is in some of our churches, not, not, not nobody in here, uh, but some that are watching me on the screen. screen. Cain's name means possessor. I kept asking the Lord, wait a minute now, his name means possessor. Cain is saying, uh, this is mine, and God, I'm going to give you a little something, something. I, I'm going to give you a little something, something. Abel is able to tap into the pattern of the first fruit that God would lay out concerning the tithe. I'm going to slow down and say it again. Abel is able to tap into the pattern of the first fruit concerning the tithe. Come on now. Uh, uh, look at here. It is Leviticus 27 and 3. And all the tithe of the land. Somebody say all, all. of the tithe, the tithe. of the land. Whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. Not a piece of the tithe, not a portion of the tithe, all of the tithe. Abel is able to tap into the first fruits of all of the tithe. It says this, it is holy to the Lord. So I kept asking the question of the text, me. I kept asking the question of the text, why is Cain like this? Why is Cain like this? Watch the text with me. Text says this. Look at somebody and say, it's the sin of the same skin. Text says that Cain's mother, Eve, says, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Look at the text. Ray not saying this. I'm just reading the Bible. The text says, his mother, Eve, says, I have acquired. One translation says, I earned. I work for, I receive payment for my wages. I have taken possession of. This is why Cain's name, this is why his name Cain. His name uh, means possessor. He's named this because his mother takes possession of him. To Eve, Cain was not God's, but hers. Y'all don't want to talk to me again. He, 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 he the firstborn is supposed to belong to God. It's said all throughout the scripture. The first is supposed to belong to God. Uh, uh, I even heard one woman say to me, she said one time, it's not hard to manipulate a man. And I even heard one woman uh, suggest and say that to me. This is the spirit of the sin that comes from Eve. Come on, somebody. This is the spirit of the sin that comes from Eve that's in her skin. Now, the language the Bible 
uses is this, uh, that I have obtained for myself a male man, a male child from the Lord. Here is my question, y'all. If I could just pause and parenthetically uh, and insert this, if I could have a little theological license here with understanding the dynamics of the text. Was not Adam man enough for Eve? After all, uh, God gave her to Adam and gave Adam to her. Was he not man enough for her uh, that she had to now go and possess, work for, change, uh, uh, and, and now have a possession over this male child? Uh, before we get too hastily uh, 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 and give to Eve too much haterade, uh, 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 we've got to we've got to look at this now. We've got to just take a, a, a good look at this. Oftentimes, mothers will take possession of their children. Not realizing that the children belong to God. That he just gave them to you for stewardship purposes. For them to come into their assignment for their lives. Mike, I just talked to you. Ain't there too many? I just talked to me and you. Uh, notice in the text that Cain becomes, just like his father, a tiller of the ground. Adam is the first tiller of the ground. That's Genesis chapter 2. He put him in the garden to till the ground, to tend to the garden, to keep it. And as much as Eve wanted to take possession of Cain to herself, what was in Cain would be just like his father was. Oh God, I'm talking to a woman right now watching me. Nobody in here, but somebody watching me at home. You take it of your child and try to hoard them unto yourself, not realizing that they're going to be who God called them to be anyway, in spite of you. You might as well prepare them and let them go and be who God has called them to be. Y'all ain't going to say amen to me this morning, but that's all right. Somebody say it's the sin of the same skin. Eve wants to take possession and watch it now. Her son Cain, here it is, ends up doing the function like his father, Adam, but picks up the attributes from her. So now all of a sudden, when Cain is not received because what he offered God is not accepted, the sin that's in his skin come from his mama. And if he had had the same spirit that Abel had, he would have known to offer God the first. But because the attributes of possession are passed to him, he ends up functioning in a sin of the skin that he don't even know he got. Oh God, help me in here this morning. So if we're going to recover from the sin of the same skin, we've got to make sure that we follow principle patterns in our families. Listen, come here to me. Listen, let me say this to you. It's not personal. Come on, look at me. It's not personal. It's about principle. That's going to make sense later on in the month. I got to say to some man and to some woman watching me right now, if you're going to heal the dynamics of your family, you've got to get your personal bent and issues out of the way. God has already predetermined how every family is supposed to operate, and it's not personal to you. If you're going to be in God's institutional dynamic, you've got to do it his way. Come on, say amen if you can. But look at somebody and say, I shall recover. Oh, God, help me in here. Here is the last one. We're getting ready to get out of here. Not only must we perceive and know them. Somebody say know them. And not only must we be able to follow the pattern. Somebody say follow the pattern. But we've got to also be able to receive the promise. Somebody say receive the promise. See, the text assures Cain uh, is not going to go without. The text ensures that God is not withholding anything from Cain. As a matter of fact, the text says this. God suggests to Cain, he says, he says, uh, God says to Cain, why are you angry? He asked him, why has your countenance fallen? Come on, those of us who ever raised children before, all of a sudden you, got, you give one child one thing, and now automatically you got to give the other child the same thing. 
because the one child begins to cut the fool and act up. I wish we would get some old school parents back from your day, sister daughter, and your grandparents' day who would look at their child and say, why are you fussing and why are you, why are you cussing and why are you going okay? That ain't for you. I got some over here that's for you. Come on, say amen if you can. Tell somebody it's about the principle. It's not personal. What God will do for one, he will do for somebody else. If you follow the principle and practice the principle and let that become a pattern, God will bless you. I might as well come around the mountain and say it this way. What God has for you, come on, somebody say, is for you. You ain't got to worry about somebody else getting your blessing. You ain't got to worry about somebody else getting your stuff. If God is your father, what he's got for you is for you. Can you say amen? Tell somebody to receive the promise and receive it with power. He asked him, why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin, here it is, lies at the door and its desire is for you. Gotta stop here and tell somebody uh, that there is sin in your skin from your bloodline that desires to have you. But God has already predetermined that you should rule over it. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Come on. There, God, there is sin in your bloodline that wants you, that desires to have you, that wants to be consumed with you. God stands there. Cain comes and asks God, why is it that you receive Abel's offering? And why have you not received my offering? And God says to Cain, listen, if you will do well, Cain, then you will not, will you be received also if you do well? And if I was Cain, I would be looking at what is it that my brother did that I didn't do. I would want to do what my brother did so that I could get the blessing that God has for me. Oh God, I almost want to go somewhere and preach in here. Uh, the cane is a tiller of the ground. The fruit grows from the ground. I wonder if the earth would begin to produce more for Cain if he simply would obey and follow the principle. Sometimes we cut off our own blessing because we won't honor the principle that God has laid out for us in our bloodline and we miss out on the promise. But I came to tell somebody, God will make up for lost time in your life. If you will just honor the principle and let that to become a pattern in your life. Don't you know the devil is learning? The Bible says that Satan rolls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, the devil Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Did y'all hear that? I have prayed for you, not that I'm going to come and get you out of the trouble. I have prayed for you, not that I'm going to come and fix it for you and make it all right. I have prayed for you, not that I'm going to make somebody give something to you. I have prayed for you that your faith, somebody have faith, that your faith fell. Now why? Because it's the principle. And if you honor the principle and allow faith to become a pattern for you, all things shall work together for your people again and stop taking everything so personal. Yes. Oh God, help me in here. Listen, 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 listen. Come on, check out, check out, check out the scripture here. I'm going to come back and check it out. Luke 1, no, 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 not Luke. Genesis 1, 26 through 20. And here is the principle of the promise right here. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Man was born with dominion bloodline, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him male, somebody say male, male. and female, somebody say female. Men and women got DNA, got dominion, DNA in your bloodline. I got to stop right here and tell somebody, you got dominion, and you got dominion, and you got dominion, and you at home got dominion. Don't you let the sin that's in the skin of your bloodline possess you and take authority over you. You got dominion over it. Y'all don't want to talk and have church. I will right here by myself. There's a drunkard in your bloodline that wants to have access to you. The same spirit that had your granddaddy don't have to have you because you got dominion in your bloodline. I said the same perversity that had your auntie, it ain't got to have you because you got dominion in your bloodline. The same addiction which 
is your great uncle don't got to be the same addiction that runs after you. Why? Because you got dominion in your bloodline. God created you to rule over. God created you to trample over serpents and scorpions. You got dominion in your bloodline. You ought to live better, walk better, talk better, be better, hear better, worship better. Come on, somebody. It's in your bloodline. God, sin seeks at the door and desires to have you. No, nope. Jesus says to Peter, I'm coming back there again. Simon, Satan desires to send you as we, but I prayed for you that your faith fail. Now, each and every moment for every one of us at the moment of temptation, we got an opportunity to have dominion over. Somebody say, have dominion over. You know, have dominion over. The power of the promise is that God will give you authority and that that authority will be with you. So I put you in a family context, Cain, for you to be able to understand the principle of living a life that I've already got prepared for you. I made you a tiller of the ground. I made you a tender of the ground because I had predetermined that the ground would not resist you and that the ground would give back to you everything that you put into it. Only simply follow the principle and follow the plan. I feel preached about the come on me. I'm going to try to teach through here, Sister Donna, but I'm about to stand on a pew. Simply because this, what ends up happening to Cain, as he gets in the field, and instead of asking his brother, he crucifies and kills his brother. I want to say and suggest to somebody that somebody came to you and you thought that they were family to you, uh, but they ended up only being familiar with you. And instead of learning what it is that you did to be who you were, they decided to kill and take from you. I want to say to you the same way that God says to Cain, Concerning Abel. He says, Come here, Cain. I didn't tell somebody ahead of time before I get into it. God has not forgotten you. But uh, come, come here, all the Abels who are in the ground. God comes to Cain and says, What is this that you have done to your brother Abel? And Cain flippantly, with a flippant response, says, I don't know what you're talking about. Ain't that just like some folk? They done acted the fool, acted the heathen, acted all familiar and acted crazy. And then when they get addressed and get called on the cop of the party, all of a sudden they got amnesia. The devil is a lie. God sees and knows and hears everything. We getting out of here, getting ready to go home. The Bible says this. God says to Cain, what is this? Where is your brother Abel? Cain says, I don't know. Am my brother's keeper? Knowing that he done killed him. Know that envy and jealousy and strife that took over Cain's mind. Knowing that the sin that's in his skin has gotten the best of him. And the Bible says that God said, jump in what I just said. I said the Bible says that God said, it is your brother's blood that cries out to me from the ground. That's crying out for justice and crying out for mercy. It's the blood of your brother that is crying out to me from the ground. And in the same way, when they put Jesus into the crown with, 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 with blood that has not been contaminated, his blood that was shed for us, his blood began to cry out on our behalf. God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on each and every one of us. I want to tell somebody that the blood has a voice. That the blood will speak. That the blood will talk on your behalf. And in our day and in our time right now, for those who are part of our ancestry, justice is coming because there is blood that is crying out for all of the injustice that has taken place, that is crying out from the ground. And God will rectify. And the same way he rectifies and deals with Cain is the same way that he will rectify and deal with those of our time. Because there is a promise of dominion in your DNA. Come on, why don't you stand and give the Lord some glory, praise, and honor right here. God, get me in here. And God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. And there is going to have to be an accountability. Cain has to receive the curse that comes upon his life uh, because he will not follow the principal pattern that God lays out in the scripture. 
And so could it be that in our time that there are those among us not following the principal pattern of how we should treat each other, how we should love each other, how we should care for each other. And justice seems to be escaping us on all sides and all different kinds of quadrants. But I believe that God wants to bring deliverance to our nation of its original sin and in the church with every house at home while we are sheltered in place. But I want to say to somebody, somebody watching me here this morning, God has not forgotten about you. And somebody in here, God has not forgotten about you. Come on, would you just lift your hands before the Lord? We're getting ready to get out of here this morning. There is going to be a return of Dominion's DNA to you this morning. I want to pray for you this morning, those of you who are watching me and those who are in this room. If you're saying, God, I want to, I want to escape of the sin of my bloodline. I don't want to repeat history. I want to walk in something that is brand new. And that's you. I want you to just wave at me real quick. I want to pray for you. I see you. I see you. I see you. God, I thank you for those who wave their hands. For those who are at home, type it in. Pray for me. God, I pray right now for those who are at home watching me and those who are here in this chapel this morning. I pray, God, that you will give us access to opportunity to live better than our ancestors. Lord, to come through difficult moments, God, and receive the promised blessing for each and every one of us that you've got prepared for our lives. God, that we won't repeat history, that we'll create new patterns and set new ways and do yes, new things, oh God. I thank you, God, that bloodline curses will be broken in this one. We know it's broken from the blood of Jesus that is shed for us. But God, the iniquities that tend to follow behind us, cut us off from those things this month. And that we may know, God, that we can walk in right relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody give the Lord a great dominion praise right there. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, if, if you're still watching me, uh, that doesn't work for you unless you know the person who is the dominion heir giver. Uh, that would be Jesus who is the Christ. If you don't have relationship with him, if you don't know him, if you're not connected with him by the profession of your faith, meaning you haven't given Jesus your heart, I want to pray for you real quickly, and I'm going to lead you in the prayer. Uh, you can't break a curse of your bloodline without Jesus. He is the curse breaker. And when you have him, all curses can be broken and new patterns can be set. I'm going to talk to somebody that is watching me right now. You don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sin. I want to pray for you. You want the cycle to stop. I hear you right now. You want the cycle to be over with. It begins with coming to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your, as your Savior. Let me uh, begin to pray with you. Come on, everybody in here, somebody's about to break a curse in their bloodline right now. Come on, Lord Jesus. Uh, come on, say it with me. Lord Jesus, we are all sinners. We need a Savior. Come inside of our hearts. Live inside of us. Change us. Give us a different mindset, different understanding. Help us to walk with you. I thank you, God, for cleansing me and washing me. Break every curse in my life. In Jesus' name, live inside my heart. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that this morning, angels were shouting and jumping. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand of praise for those who just came to him yeah. this morning? Listen, I like takeaways, but before you go, I need you to do this for me. Write the word believer down, and when we finish this broadcast, I want you to do this. I want you to text on your phone the word believer as one word to 40691. I'll say it again. Text the word believer as one word to 40691. And what will happen is a screen will open up, text messages will come back to you, fill in your information, screen opens up, and I want to show you how to break a curse in your life by being and walking as a child of God, a believer in Jesus Christ. We want to help you grow in your faith. We want you to meet us this month, all month long, as one of the ten where you can get in when you fit in. God bless you. We love you. Anybody like takeaways besides me? Come on, let's do these takeaways and then be on our way on out of here. Here we go. This is it uh, for the year, the year of 2020. Let's start. One, two, three. I have overcome the skin of my skin in my bloodline through the power of the blood of Jesus. As a result, go ahead. I'll ask the Holy Spirit for inside information. I will receive inside information. I will operate in the Lord's wisdom and in the Lord's grace. The Lord can give you inside information when you're dealing with issues of your family dynamic. Some things require wisdom. Yes. 
And so as you apply wisdom, the Lord will speak to you on how to handle different issues that you may face. Come on, let's go again. One, two, three. I have overcome the sin of the skin in my bloodline through the power of the blood of Jesus. As a result, go ahead. I have set principles and set patterns of my bloodline. Uh -huh. I will apply the blood of Jesus and develop godly principles and godly patterns to walk in a new destiny. Sometimes, now listen to me, this is for parents who are watching me. Sometimes you have to disclose to your children the patterns of iniquity. If you don't take time to disclose the issues or the patterns of iniquity, your children will be subject to walk in them. I've had to do it with mine. You've got to do it with yours. If you want the curse to stay broken, it don't make no sense for somebody to break a curse and then now the six-year-old become 20 and walk in the same thing. Come on, amen, somebody. I'm saying God wants us to live better at home. Come on, say amen if you can. Amen. Wants us to live better at home. Come on, let's do these together. One, two, three. I believe and receive the prepared promise of God for me. I will change clothes. I will put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I will put on the mind of Christ. Uh -huh. I will put on the ways of Christ. Let's go to the next one. I look like something was something from something. Here we go. One, two, three. I have overcome the sin of the skin in my bloodline through the power of the blood of Jesus. As a result, I will break every bloodline curse through the power of the promise. Uh -huh. I will break every bloodline curse by receiving the power of the promise. Keep going. I will break every bloodline curse in the name of Jesus. I will break every bloodline curse in the name of Jesus. Come on. I break every bloodline curse in the name of Jesus. Do y'all believe that this morning? Come on, give the Lord a praise. I break every bloodline curse. I want to say this. Just, this is just for us here. Not even the street alone. Not even the street audience. Not another day will another generation walk in the iniquity of your bloodline. Amen. I believe that right now today, as we start to begin to teach more family, curses are being broken right yes, now. Sir. Not another generation will walk in any more poverty. Not another generation will walk in any more curses. Now another generation will walk in, walk in any more relational trauma. I believe that the curse can be broken and that God can be each. I'm talking about your grandchildren and your grandchildren and your grandchildren. It can start today with you receiving a new principal pattern to walk in the pattern and principles of God until that thing is made manifest in a generation coming behind you. I just felt that come on me right there. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's do this and let's get out of here. One, two, three. In the year of 2020, I thank God for insight, foresight. Come on, let's pray and be dismissed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, God, for those who are here this morning in a streaming audience that is chimed in. God, thank you. Let your presence go with them each and everywhere they go. God, now may the God of peace uh, shine your face upon them. Oh, God, keep everyone in the center of your will. We leave this place, but never from your presence. Bless the streaming on this week on Monday night, God, as we talk about marriage recovery, Wednesday night as we discover dynamics, and Thursday as we speak to Lord God being able to heal America with a discussion of race, religion, and relationships. Bless us this week as we seek to extend the kingdom. Go with your people as they go. Meet them in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. amen. God bless you, dominion. You are dismissed.